On Christmas Eve, Fritz and Mary were looking forward to unpacking their presents. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. It was their uncle with a bunch of gifts in his hands. The children were very happy to see him. Then they began to unpack the presents. Mary got fancy dolls, toy dishes, and a beautiful silk dress. Fritz also got what he wanted a magnificent horse and a mouse king. Mary noticed that there was a soldier under the tree. It was the nutcracker designed to neatly crunch hard nuts. The girl really liked it. But Fritz said it was his gift and tried to take it from his sister. The children stretched the nutcracker so far that they tore his arm off. The broken toy became unnecessary for the boy. Mary was very upset and burst into tears. But my uncle was able to repair the soldier. Cool. The girl was happy and hugged him gently. The day was very busy, so she soon got tired and fell asleep right under the tree. During her sleep, Mary heard strange sounds. They were like mouse fuss. The girl opened her eyes. The objects in the house seemed much larger than they were. And the tree under which she fell asleep became absolutely gigantic. Mary realized that it was not the objects that had increased, but that she had decreased. Suddenly, the mouse king with his army appeared before the eyes of the astonished girl. Mary was very frightened and wanted to run away. But the giant mice stopped her. And then a miracle happened the nutcracker jumped to his feet and grabbed the girl. They instantly climbed the tree to the bookshelf, and along it got to Fritz's toys. There was a whole collection of tin soldiers. The nutcracker called for help. The soldiers immediately jumped to their feet and ran after him. The nutcracker took command of the army, and the soldiers began to fight the army of the Mouse King. The battle between toys and mice was fierce. But, unfortunately, there were too many mice, and the Nutcracker army began to suffer defeat. Mary saw this and ran out of her hiding place. She threw her shoe at the Mouse King and hit him right in the head, and he fell to the floor unconscious. The rest of the mice realized that the battle was lost and ran away in all directions. Mary ran to the Nutcracker, but he lay unconscious, as he was badly wounded by the Mouse King. The girl thought that he was dead, and began to cry bitterly. And suddenly, a beautiful fairy appeared behind Mary. She decided to help the girl. With a wave of her wand, she revived the Nutcracker. With a second wave of her wand, the fairy turned the soldier into a handsome prince. Mary and Nutcracker looked at each other with loving eyes and could not take their eyes off. With a wave of her wand for the third time, the fairy took the couple in love to the kingdom of sweets. The trees there were made of candy, and the flowers were made of marmalade. It was a wonderful place. Mary closed her eyes for a second in pleasure. And suddenly, she heard the voice of her mother, who called her by name. Opening her eyes, the girl saw her mother, who looked at her in confusion. Mary also could not understand what was happening. The girl told about her wonderful journey, but her mother only smiled sweetly. Then Mary saw the pewter nutcracker in her arms. And then she realized that she had slept under the tree all night, and everything that happened to her was just a vivid dream. A few years later, the nephew of their godfather came to visit Mary and Fritz. As soon as he entered the house, the girl almost fell to the floor in surprise. The boy looked like the nutcracker as two drops of water. He also liked Mary at first sight. After some time, they got married and lived no worse than in the magic kingdom of sweets. There lived a husband and wife. For a long time they already wanted to have a child, but he was not there. One day, my wife fell ill. The husband asked her what she wants the most. The wife replied that there was a magnificent garden nearby, where many of the most beautiful flowers grow. There is a beautiful Rapunzel in the garden. It looks so fresh and so green that she really wanted to taste it. 
But the garden was surrounded by a high fence, and no one dared to enter it, since this garden belonged to one witch. She possessed great power, and everyone in the world feared her. The husband loved his wife very much, and decided to get a Rapunzel for her, no matter what it cost him. And so at dusk he climbed over the stone fence into the sorceress's garden, in a hurry picked up a whole handful of green Rapunzel, and brought it to his wife. She immediately made herself a salad from it, and ate greedily. She liked this salad so much that the next day she wanted even more than before. The husband made his way into the garden again, but the witch was already standing in front of him. She glared at him angrily and said that he would pay a lot for stealing the Rapunzel. He asked the witch not to be angry, because he tore off the Rapunzel for his wife, who was very ill. And he loves her so much. The witch's anger passed a little, and she said that if it was true, she would allow him to collect as much Rapunzel as he wanted, but on one condition. He will have to give the witch the child who will be born to his wife. The husband agreed with fear. When the wife gave birth to a daughter, the witch immediately appeared, took the child with her, and named her Rapunzel. Rapunzel became the most beautiful girl in the world. When she was 12 years old, the witch locked her in a tower. That tower was in the forest, and it had no doors or stairs. Only at the very top was a small window. When the witch wanted to climb the tower, she called Rapunzel to pull her sides down. And Rapunzel had long, beautiful hair. She hears the voice of the witch, loosens her braids, ties them up to the window hook, and the hair falls down, and the witch then climbs up, clinging to them. Several years passed, and the king's son happened to ride a horse through the forest where the tower stood. Suddenly he heard singing, and it was so pleasant that he stopped and began to listen. Rapunzel sang it in her wonderful voice. The prince wanted to climb up. He began to look for the entrance to the tower, but it was impossible to find him. He once saw how the witch climbs up the braids that Rapunzel lowered her. And the next day, when it was already getting dark, the prince drove up to the tower and called Rapunzel. She heard, pulled her braids down, and the prince climbed up. Rapunzel, seeing that a man she had never seen came to her, was very frightened at first. But the prince spoke to her affectionately and said that his heart was so touched by the singing that he decided to see her without fail. Then Rapunzel ceased to be afraid, and when he asked if she agreed to marry him, she gave her consent and held out her hand to him. But they just did not know how to go down together. They figured out that when the prince came, he would always take a piece of silk with him, and Rapunzel would weave a ladder out of it. And when the ladder is ready, they will go down it together and leave. The sorceress did not notice anything until one day Rapunzel asked why it is easier to drag the prince up. The sorceress understood everything, got angry and clutched in rage at Rapunzel's beautiful hair. I wrapped them around my left arm several times and with my right grabbed the scissors and cut them off. She took the sorceress into the dense thicket of Rapunzel and hid her there. She tied the severed braids to the window hook, and when the prince appeared, she pulled them down. The prince climbed up and saw the witch. She looked at him with her malicious look and said that he would never see Rapunzel. The king's son was beside himself with grief and jumped out of the tower in despair, but the thorny thorns of the bushes, on which he fell, gouged out his eyes. The blind prince wandered for several years in grief and sorrow through the forest, 
all the time grieving and crying for his beloved lost. Once he went into a dense thicket. Suddenly the prince heard someone singing, it seemed so familiar to him, and he went to meet him. When he came closer, Rapunzel recognized him, threw herself on his neck and cried bitterly with joy. Two tears fell in his eyes, and the prince regained his sight and began to see as before. He brought her to his kingdom, and they lived for many, many years in happiness and joy.